starting with the draft, obviously May 14th is a lottery. 14% chance at the number one pick. 50% chance at number five. Obviously, Zion is the 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 name of the game, the eye on the prize. But um, you know, we got to be realistic in that there, there's other prospects that that will have to uh, do some homework on because there, there's a likelihood that that it'll be the field that'll be the Knicks pick rather than Zion. Well, what's your yeah. guys' overall take on you know how Zion would fit with the Knicks and who's you know a prospect maybe one through five that that you've taken a look at? Um, outside of Zion. JL, I'll start with you, man. Uh, how Zion would fit here? <laughs> <laughs> I I just, Mitch blocking people. <laughs> I just envision him and Mitch flying around <laughs> for the same time, swatting anything that comes near the hoop, uh, and him passing the ball from half court, bounce pass between somebody's legs, for, yeah, I, I I envision the great things if Zion comes here. Like I I I know people kind of worried about him being too short to play power forward and blah, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I feel like he kind of bully people there. If he's that big, use his strength, bully people, kind of be like a baby Giannis almost at six six, meet people out the way and dunk on your face. That's how I feel like he could be used if we ever get him. But um, that's just me, you know. That's just me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but as far as other prospects. Mm. That depends on where we land, man. This is a after Zion. I mean, I know Ja is 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 a nice constellation prize. Um, uh, I kind of I'm kind of starting to lean towards Darius. Mm. I'm kind of Darius starting, Garland. Interesting. I kind of start like when I start to think of everything together and mm-hmm. and like, I mean, only the only reason why I wouldn't take him is if I knew Kyrie was coming. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's going to be the difficult thing, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. if they land the number two pick and they, you know, decidedly go against the point guard, is that an indication that Kyrie's in the bag? I, I don't yeah, know. Right. Or, you know, a lot of it has been talked about with Anthony Davis. If they land the number one pick, you know, do you use that? Well, maybe it's more a question if they don't land the number one pick. And then, like you said, if you... If you're now drafting someone who um, isn't the best player available, but more for fit, mm-hmm. does it make sense to trade back yeah. and maybe use that pick to, again, add other pieces around, you know, what you're building? So, yeah, if they don't win, it's funny. A lot of the, I guess it's just funny. A lot of the talk has been if they win the first pick, do you keep it or trade it for an AD if that's possible? But to me, I think the decisions come if they don't win it. Yeah. What do you do? Because you know, now it's not as like a premium player guaranteed right. that I think I would trade back. <laughs> you you trade back? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, three, uh, three, I might trade back after two. <laughs> yeah. I guess it depends on on who, who's behind us, right? Like if Phoenix is behind us and, and they're hot after Morant, you know, let's say we get yeah, second right. or, or we get third, uh, maybe it could maybe a worthwhile um, trade. Matt Macri, what's your take on, you know, your draft scenarios and strategy going forward? Um, it's just really interesting to me because I think at the, at this point you you could argue that the three um, most high-ceiling players in the draft, um, three guys who if you probably were betting today, you would bet would go one, two, and three in some order, would be Zion, uh, John Morant, and, and R.J. Barrett. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing that all three of them have in common is they all are players that um, profile, at least at, at, at this point, as someone who needs the ball to be effective. Hmm. And, you know, part of what, I mean, I'm obviously not the first person to say this, part of what makes Golden State so effective is, yes, they have a big four, but two of those guys don't need the ball at all. Oh, yeah. to, I don't think Zion needs the ball, though. I To me, I think he... To, he does because he's just not a shooter. He's right not now. a shooter, yeah. And neither is Morant, and and neither is Barrett. Um, so, you know, the, and here's the really interesting thing. So they have the Knicks. I mean, they have kind of messaged that regardless of who signs in free agency, they are not going to divert from the overall larger organizational plan of, you know, essentially taking the best guys um, and trying to get the best people in here talent wise and molding them, you know? Mm. So if that's really the case, um, 
how did, I mean, even if they do have an indication that, you know, Kyrie and Durant are both in the bag, does that mean that they trade out of the second or third pick down to, I don't know, eight or nine or 10 and get like a, um, you know, um, like a Hunter or mm-hmm. like even a Clark from, from uh, Gonzaga, Gonzaga guys, yeah. guys who are a little bit more further along, maybe could, uh, they're obviously more effective on defense than a lot of those guys at the top. Well, other than Zion, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I think they're, you know, it's funny. We've praised Perry and Scott um, uh, and Steve Mills, excuse me, a lot over the last year and change. And they, and we have every right to praise them, but there have there has not been a lot of downside with anything they've done. Even the Porzingis trade, even the Porzingis mm-hmm. trade, it was like they were against a rock and a hard in between a rock and a hard place, and they got a good return. Now it's when there starts to be real, cognizable, oh, yeah. tangible downside to certain decisions. Oh yeah. So um, it's going to be really, really interesting. I, I, I don't envy the position they're in, and. I just wish the draft was after free agency because I was. <laughs> oh, I would love for that. I've been Black preaching player, that. Man. I've been, I've been preaching that man all year because it, it just makes uh, your decisions so much easier. Um, yep. All those, you know, some people may just say, you know, you have to draft based on you know uh, the best play available for your team and and worry about free agency later on. I know. Yep. I I had mentioned that to Alan Hahn and I called up a show and and that was his take is that you, you just got to go. Um, with who's the best for your team in the draft and, and worry about free agency later on. Um, but my take on the draft, I think, I don't know. I, I like this kid, John Morant, a lot, man. And, and just yeah. looking at our offensive futility, not just this year, but just over the past few years, man. Especially, you know, this year, offensive rating in the tank, um, assist numbers in the tank, passing out of the pick and roll, execution out of the pick and roll in the tank. This guy just seems tailor-made. Um, to, to improve this team leaps and bounds. He just seems like the point guard that we truly need. Now, of course, I would take Kyrie Irving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I don't see how you pass on John Morant. You know, I would even take him. And if Kyrie comes, you know, you, you figure it out later on. Yeah. You, you figure well, no, it out later on. Man. Especially because, like we know, it takes, you know, the whole Kevin Knox. He's only 19 was the hashtag, right? Like, yeah. it takes these guys time. So it might not be the worst thing that, you know, they come and they don't have to be the main person. You could give them a couple of years to develop. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that's there. But I was just looking to remind myself. I mean, Atlanta, they got five picks in this mm. draft. It could be as it's slated now, they'd have the fifth and the ninth from Dallas. Yeah. So it's, like, you know, if you're trading back, you know, that, especially when you think of these guys sort of in tears, like you wonder, yeah. like, okay, you know, if you get like the second pick, could you get two picks like say D- Dallas pick falls like 10 11 um you know to me that's that's what would be intriguing and that's, that's what you look at yeah. and that's why the lottery even if they don't get the first pick is important because you could see some team i don't know about Atlanta but you could see some team talking themselves into RJ Barrett yeah. as like this is a guy who's going to score you know 25 points a game for us for you know 8 years or whatever like you could, you could talk. I, I don't. I personally don't really have a, a strong opinion on him, but I could see someone having one. So. Yeah, I think I'm nervous about Barrett, which is why if I had, if I had three, I probably would trade now. I'm like, he makes me nervous a little bit. Like his jump shot seems so all over the place. And I yeah. know, you know, that's things he can fix, but um, I don't know this the, the jump shooting combined with the foul shooting, to me, is just like, it, it just seems like it's, it's going to be a long road to fix that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought, you know, overall his tournament play was a bit up and down. You know, definitely I agree with you, JLS. His jumper and his free throw shooting definitely left a lot to be desired, but I feel like those things can be improved upon. I think I like I, I like his competitive will. I like his ability to facilitate. He can certainly do that. I think he can rebound the ball as well. So I think offensively he is a bit versatile in that regard, but, you know, you just want to see the shooting numbers improve yeah. a little bit. Absolutely, man. Personally, I wouldn't mind if we ended up with Culver. I'll just throw that out there. Yeah, I like I like Culver too. I like. Culver. I mean, he's, if you look at this team and how they were this year, I mean, putting everything else aside, you want to talk about a guy that's kind of tailor made for what it seems like the Knicks um, need with this particular group. I, I think it's probably Culver. So. Yeah, I, I thought Culver had an outstanding tournament. Yeah. I mean, he basically he led them to the championship. He he was solid, he man. He, he was. His solid. blow by speed though concerns me, but I do like like other assets of his game. Like, I, yeah. Uh, and he has like that will to win. He just seems like he hit a nice jumper. Yep. 
when he when he needs to. Mm-hmm. But then it seems like his athleticism has him limited sometimes in what he can do, especially when uh, the game is online. 